It was not too long ago, back at CES in January of 2014, that Valve unveiled its plans to develop these Steam Machines, which is supposed to bring PC gaming into the living room. And uh, that's a pretty complicated thing, but Valve has thought through some of those problems and their products, including the Steam Controller and the Steam Link, the device that sends the video and the controls from your PC to the TV, are almost on the market. And uh, I'm here with Mary. We're going to take a look at some of these products. Uh, we have, first of all, the new Steam Controller which uh, offers some interesting inputs for people that overcomes the hurdles when you don't have a keyboard. Which it's is interesting because this is we've seen multiple iterations of this, but this yeah. is like the final retail product that we're going to see on the market when you buy this. Exactly, yeah. I think people can get them, if they pre-ordered, they're going to be getting them within the next week or two. Otherwise, it's going to be on the market in November. Uh, so let's open it up. All right, let's do it. Want to do it? Sure. All right, here we go. This is the... Final gamepad. Ooh. It's really amazing to see, like you were saying about the touchpad controls. It's fascinating because in the iterations we saw maybe um, not as nice of a plastic as, yeah. as this final product. Uh, it didn't have um, the different finish, uh, and you know it feels really good. It feels a lot better than the original iterations yeah. um, that people were getting. Uh, the buttons. Um, have some nice depth to them, um, and and the touchpad feels much more sensitive to your controls. And what's really great to them is they're also buttons, right? So right. not only can you move your fingers around the touchpads, um, but they all click as well. Uh, and you also have buttons on the back as well. Yeah, it's sort of similar to the new uh, Xbox One like Elite controller, the $150 thing that's coming out. There, of course, is one analog stick, uh, and that is used, you know, for games that we're used to. Uh, speaking to Valve last week, they told me that pretty much any game that uses the Xbox uh, input control scheme will adapt to this very easily, um, but they're also making it really easy through Steam itself uh, to provide an interface that lets you remap not controls, but actions to the controller, which is slightly different from assigning a button to an action in a game. Uh, now this also comes with uh, two AA batteries, and these provide, believe it or not, 80 hours of gameplay. That's according to Valve, which is really significant. That, that's really freaking high. Uh, I have no idea how they pulled it off. Uh, and we obviously have to test that to see if that's accurate. And there is the little wireless dongle. This uses a proprietary RF radio signal. So you will need this to use uh, the Steam controller. It will not work with other Bluetooth dongles or any other radios you may have. This is something Valve has developed especially for the controller. There's a lot of button inputs on these controllers now, from the shoulders, the triggers, uh, the back part buttons, um, and then the actual touchpad themselves being buttons. What's going to be really fascinating to see is how the community maps these individually for particular games. So you might find for a game like Shovel Knight, they'll be completely differently mapped yeah. uh, you know, for a precision platformer than it would for a shooter or something like that. So uh, you're going to see a lot of input from the community, which I think will be really fascinating on, on how to use this yeah. per game. And Valve said they may be rewarding people with certain badges that contribute to that effort. Uh, but meanwhile, for games that support it, uh, there will be an icon that clearly indicates that this game supports the Steam controller really well. If a game does not have great support, Valve will also point that out so you understand what you're getting yourself into. It's a very clear warning and lets it be known that you're going to have to reconfigure this or find another alternative. Uh, so moving on from the controller, which I'll leave open down here, uh, we're going to get into the Steam Link. Now this is a little box that you connect on your TV and what this does is it allows you to send both inputs and video to and fro uh, from your PC to your TV. So that way you're not dangling like really long HDMI cables or really long controller cords uh, to get that to work. And the reason it sends input back is so that you can actually plug in your Steam controller. All right, so there's a few inputs here already. We can see it's, uh, it's actually pretty heavy. It's yeah. pretty concentrated for what it is. Yeah, it's a hefty little guy. And um, you know, this is sort of solving one of the bigger issues, which is you know, connecting two devices that are really far away. There are alternatives out there for video services like the Chromecast or Apple's AirPlay, mm -hmm. but, um, but this actually solves something that had not been addressed before, which is you know, sending everything you need for a game uh, you know, from a high-powered system. But of course, if you don't already have a PC and you want to get into the Steam Machine, you, know, you just want to start enjoying that, you can buy one from a company like Alienware. Uh, last year, they came out with the Alienware Alpha PC, which is a really small um, PC that had sort of a, a dual boot OS. It lets you use uh, Steam OS, which has the, uh, the Steam uh, like UI built into it, or Windows for traditional gaming, because not everything is supported under Steam OS right out of the box. Um, but this is Alienware's latest version, and let's take a look. Now, it too comes with a controller. 
Uh, Valve does have control over who calls their machine a Steam machine, and one of the rules is that it has to include a controller. Um, but people can choose to buy it if they wish without it, but they need to have the option to purchase that. Um, yeah, and there's more batteries and cables, but really let's just look at the Alpha because it's a very tiny PC that starts around $450, and even those base configs are pretty good. It's based off of a NVIDIA 860M mobile GPU. Uh, it's been slightly modified. Uh, it's got, most of them have GDDR5 RAM and up to a terabyte of hard drive space and I believe 8 to 16 gigs of system memory. Uh, this thing is small, it's cheap, but it does compare pretty well to console games. Uh, last year we did a benchmark uh, series sort of comparing it to consoles, games like Shadow of Mordor, Watch Dogs, and the like. It actually performed quite a bit on par, and when you think about it, it's a really good deal because the PC is so versatile and has such a big game library. And what's the retail price for this package? Right, so this one starts at uh, 450 and I believe it goes all the way up to $800. But ultimately what you have here is a very tiny portable PC that's made for gaming and is pretty good. You're not going to get the high-end graphics that everyone loves and you know really argues is the reason for PC gaming in the first place but again you have a massive library of games a very flexible system and something that works perfectly in Valve's new Steam Machine ecosystem. Now looking between these three pieces it looks like they're trying to give you pretty much an all-in-one system for gaming uh, on your TV yeah. uh, with their own individual controller which I think is really fascinating to kind of jump in on that so they're kind of trying to go all or nothing in here. And what's really fascinating is that they're using the community kind of to test out their systems. They've reiterated it throughout the process. And now, even with that, there's different versions of this PC based on input from the community. Yeah. And there's uh, going to be a lot of other Steam machines as well. There are a lot of companies making these. So you're going to see them from, you know, there's probably going to be more than a dozen at launch later this fall. Mm. So you'll need to check back with us. We'll be doing a lot more testing to see how these actually perform and run. Uh, not just the PC, but the controller as well. Um, see if this is actually as functional as, as we hope it is. Yeah, it's supposed to be used for all sorts of games. Uh, you know, everything from Civilization uh, to Street Fighter to a first-person shooter. But how well it works, that remains to be seen. So yeah, stay tuned. More from GameSpot.